Hearthstone is getting a new expansion on April 7th, Ashes of Outland. There's so many exciting things to experiment with from the Ashes. A new hero, new keywords, and minions that get better when they... die? Okay. Huh, this should be interesting. For this video, we'll briefly cover the new hero, keywords, and special mechanics coming during this expansion. We'll also review the first few cards with these keywords and mechanics, as well as Kael'thas. If you're just here for the card reviews, there's a timecode in the description for in-depth reviews and quick reviews. So if you surprisingly didn't know already, what is the first ever additional hero class to Hearthstone? Demon Hunters, represented by Illidan Stormrage. Are you prepared? Well, we made a separate video discussing Demon Hunter abilities, their mechanics, and reviewing the basic and initiate set cards that were revealed. There's a link in the description to that video for more in-depth coverage. But in this review, we'll be looking at the first of Illidan's cards from Ashes of Outland that use the new keyword for Demon Hunters, Outcast. Outcast is like combo for rogues in that you get a bonus effect described when you fulfill the condition. In this case, if the card is the leftmost or rightmost card in your hand when you play it, you get the bonus. It's the outermost card when you cast it. Outcast. Not too difficult, right? The other keyword for this expansion is Dormant. It wasn't a keyword until now, but we've seen its effect before with cards like Loosened Bark, The Darkness, and Sherizen Corpse Flower. It's also shown up in a few tavern brawls and adventures. Dormant means the minion takes up space on the board, but is inactive and can't be targeted until some condition that will awaken it is fulfilled. This expansion, it looks as though we'll see quite a few minions with imprisoned in their name. They all start as dormant for two turns, and then they do something powerful when they awaken. Poor tempo, but worth experimenting with. The last thematic mechanic for this expansion is the primes that each class will get. The initial card for each class will be a legendary with meh, okay, stats and effect, but they each have a death rattle to shuffle a prime version of themselves into your deck. Apparently there's this crazy group in Outland like Mecha Draxus that have decided to upgrade these legendaries for us. Sure, why not? The prime versions of these cards have really powerful effects for the mana cost, so they'll be fun to experiment with as well. With Dormant and Primes, it's almost as though Blizzard is trying to teach people long-term investment strategies with this expansion. Hopefully these cards get to see play even against day traders running aggro decks. Okay, now it's time to start the card reviews, but I should note that we do card reviews a bit differently here. Rather than the standard 5 star ratings for cards, we ask 3 questions Hearthstone players really want to know. First, would the card fit into one of the current meta decks, tier 1 through tier 3 decks per HS Replay's tier list? So is it meta now? As you can see, there's a lot of variety in the meta at the moment, so this may be quite the challenge to gauge, but this helps gauge the card's power level a bit. Second, will the card fit into a meta deck once the expansion comes out? Meaning, from what we know thus far, is it powerful enough to create or support a new meta archetype? So is it meta later? And third, most importantly, does it inspire or enable crazy experimental or meme decks? So is it meme deck worthy? Each card will get a yes or no to these questions. There's a link to quick reviews with puns in the description below for those of you without much time. For everyone else, let's get into the main reviews. First up is Kael'thas Sunstrider, mainly because he's already burned his way into the game a bit early. He's a 6 mana 4-7 neutral minion with the fun effect that every third spell you cast each turn costs zero. So is he good? Well, he's interesting at least. You have to run a mix of low cost and high cost spells to use him effectively, and as he's not likely to stick around on board very long, you're probably going to want to get his benefit right away. That means you need 4 cards in hand to play him well. Kael'thas, 2 cheap spells, and a spell that's powerful enough to be worth the hassle. 
The only meta decks at the moment likely to consider running him are Res Priest, Highlander Mage, Combo Priest, and perhaps Quest Hunter. Quest Hunter is interesting because they can generate coins, have a couple low cost spells, and swarm of locusts on the top end. But honestly, the conditions required to get value from him make these decks significantly weaker, so he does not meet the meta now requirements. His effect is powerful enough that if a class can get a nice balance of low cost spells and high cost very effective spells into their hand reliably, there is potential for a powerful meta deck to come together. Mage seems the most likely candidate with their low cost twin spells and high power top end spells. A mage with Ray of Frost and Arcane Breath on the low end, and Power of Creation, Puzzle Box of Yog saron and Pyroblast on the high end might be able to get there, but he's just not reliable enough that it's likely a meta deck will be able to use him effectively. However, he does open a ton of possibilities for meme and experimental decks. We've already experimented with using him to play Darkest Hour in Warlock, Boomship and Dimensional Ripper in Warrior, and Eye of the Storm in Shaman. This is part of the reason we know he's challenging to pull off reliably. But he is a ton of fun to build around. I'm sure there will be some new cards in the upcoming expansion that will be fun to use him to cheat out. So yes, he's definitely meme deck worthy. Speaking of cheating, this next card for Demon Hunters feels like it's cheating. Spectral Sight is a two mana spell to draw a card and if played as the outermost card from your hand, you get to draw another card. Two mana to draw a card is disappointing as a practically useless card slot just to cycle through your deck, but two mana to draw two cards is amazing. In aggro builds of Demon Hunter, it shouldn't be too difficult to get the outcast effect from this card effectively once their hand is nearly empty from dropping cheap minions. As for current meta decks, error cannot divide by zero. As a potentially discounted arcane intellect, it would see play if it could. And due to the value with the outcast effect, I'm pretty certain it will see play in a number of demon hunter meta decks, even after things settle down a bit. As for meme decks, it's difficult to say yet because we haven't seen enough of what demon hunters will have access to. Other than as a way to draw through their decks in an all outcast deck, if such a thing were possible. This doesn't really inspire a meme style of play. Perhaps we could do a Chef Nomi deck with this and all the other draw mechanics in Demon Hunter, but this card itself doesn't really pull that or any other deck together. I'm gonna have to say this is not meme deck worthy at the moment. This next card should just win the game against Warlocks when drawn, because I don't see how Gul'dan can keep playing without his skull. Skull of Gul'dan is a 5 mana demon hunter spell to draw 3 cards, and if outcast is triggered, the cards will cost 3 less. Drawing 3 cards for 5 mana is pretty good. Drawing 3 cards and reducing their cost by a total of 9 mana for 5 mana? I need somebody to post the Spanish laughing man memes in the comments. Blizzard does playtesting before releasing cards, but that's potentially game-breaking nerf-worthy. If it could see play in the current meta, it would. But yeah, no Demon Hunter decks available at the moment. As for the future meta, Illidan learned how to transform into a massive, nearly unstoppable, overpowered demon once he obtained the Skull of Gul'dan. This feels like that. So yeah, it'll see play in just about every Demon Hunter meta deck. And did someone say, card draw and cost reduction? That's like the bread and butter of meme decks. We may not have a clue what the most broken meme experiments to run with this card are yet, but this will enable many silly and bizarre games. So yes, undeniably yes, this is a meme deck card. Speaking of card cost reductions, this next minion is pretty helpful when he wakes up. Imprisoned Satyr is a three mana three three demon that starts as dormant for two turns. When he awakens, a random minion in your hand becomes five mana cheaper. What's nice is that this effect triggers before you draw a card, so it's a bit easier to control which minion will get the discount by playing out non-desirable minions while waiting. Want to set up a Malagos Faceless Manipulator OTK? 
Satyr's got you. This feels far more reliable than Dream Petal Florist ever did. Imprisoned Satyr is slow, but good. That being said, the current meta Druid decks would not use him, as they don't need him. Token, Embiggen, and Quest Druid are the only meta decks at the moment, and this is way too slow for Token or Embiggen Druid, and the current popular finishers for Quest Druid are Ysera Unleashed and Cenarius. He's not needed in the current versions of the deck. However, with Quest Druid as an excellent example, Druid has proven to be quite successful at making time back from slow early or mid-game turns, so even spending 3 mana on a minion that is useless for 2 turns should be something they can handle effectively. I'm certain a meta deck or two will decide to free this satyr from captivity. And as with the last card, mana discounts equal meme deck enabled. It's time to try out Lucent Bark Heal Druid 2.0 and so much more. Arcane Flak Mage got a stat buff and easier conditions for a required delay. Imprisoned Observer is a 3 mana 4 5 demon for mages that sits around uselessly for 2 turns, but awakens to blast all the enemy minions with 2 damage. It's slow and easy to play around, but opponents may hesitate to play new minions into a board with this guy melting his cage. For a similar effect, Arcane Flak Mage requires 5 mana and only gets a 3 2 in secret, requiring 2 cards to pull this off. Druids pay 5 mana for the AoE Starfall and don't get a minion. Can mages afford the delay? With enough freeze options, probably. Is this powerful enough to run in the current forms of Highlander Mage? Not really. They don't need it as they have a lot of better, immediately impactful options at the moment. Of course, a number of the cards Highlander Mage currently uses will be rotating to wild, and a number of new archetypes will be developing. With how aggressive Demon Hunter is looking to be, with wide, small boards, as well as Quest Hunter, Overload Shaman, Token Druid, and possibly a Token Paladin if it survives rotation, AoE effects will be in high demand. That being said, Mage already has a ton of AoE, and I'm not sure if it will be worth running this even once they have fewer options to choose from. Without something more, I don't think this will last past the experimental phase of the new meta. As for meme options, shall we make an arcane flak mage, imprisoned observer, secret freeze mage, to stop our opponents from ever touching us and whittling them down while we set up something massive? Sure. It probably won't be particularly powerful, but we'll give it some tests. Also, the mage prime that was just announced and we'll cover in a later review turns into a demon, so I'm curious if we can make a demon mage. There's nothing in the neutral that benefits the archetype yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with something as demons are turning out to be a big part of this expansion. We'll see. Now we get to look at the first prime cards that were announced. Druids get Arch Spore Meshifen, a 3 mana 3-4 three, taunt with a death rattle to shuffle Meshifen prime into your deck. A 3-4 taunt for 3 isn't a bad tempo play, and the upside of running this guy is gargantuan. When that Meshifen Prime comes back into your hand and you've got the mana, you'll be able to summon a 10 mana 9-9 nine, nine taunt. Actually that's pretty terrible. Oh right, there's more. You also summon a 9-9 nine, nine Fungal Giant and choose whether to give it taunt or rush. 1818 in stats for 10 mana. Two hulking taunts or a taunt and a burly shovel fist for just 10 mana? Sign me up. So current token druids probably wouldn't run this. Quest druids, however, would definitely use it because they'll be able to drop 2727 in stats for 10 mana, as the quest reward gives them both fungal giants and they have amazing draw to get back to it. Embiggen Druids would also laugh maniacally for having a new super value taunt tool to completely lock their opponents out of the game. Yeah, this would be meta now. And when this can actually see play, it will. A lot. The second side is big and requires getting out of your deck again, but Druids are masters of churning through their decks quickly. 
So get your board clears ready. And who can ignore the option to drop 2727 in stats with a single card? So what's better than dropping 399 minions for 10 mana? Dropping 399 minions for 5 mana, bouncing the prime back to your hand, and doing it again. With Imprisoned Satyr's discount on Mishifen Prime, or either Bouncing Brewmaster, their cost can be reduced to allow it to be played again, and maybe even a third time. Would it be a good idea? It's horrendously inefficient and almost never necessary, but yeah, it's a great idea just to see if we can make it work. So how about Shamans? What does their Prime Legendary look like? Lady Vosh is a 3 mana 4-3 with spell damage plus 1. Her death rattle is to shuffle Vosh Prime into your deck. Plus 1 spell damage on an aggressively statted 3-drop isn't bad, and opponents probably can't ignore her since a deck that would run this likely has a number of damage spells. Why run lots of damage spells? Because Prime. Not Twitch Prime, but you should definitely use that to support streamers you like. No, Vaj Prime is a 7 mana 5 4 with spell damage plus 1. Again, underwhelming by herself, but her battle cry is to draw 3 spells and reduce their cost by 3. Why, yes, I'll take 2 lava bursts and a lightning bolt to immediately blast my opponent in the face for 16 damage at no extra cost. Though I guess we would be overloaded like mad the next turn if they're still alive. Actually, at the moment, there aren't a lot of high-cost face damage spells in Shaman, so building a deck hoping to do that probably won't work out too well. The awesome thing about Vash Prime is that she selectively draws spells and discounts them. The challenge with her is playing her predecessor, getting her again, and playing her while you still have three spells left in your deck worth discounting. She's much more of a gamble than the last Prime. So the only meta shaman deck at the moment is aggro overload shaman, which would benefit from her prime versions, card draw, and both versions spell damage buff. That deck currently uses Spirit of the Frog to draw the spells out, so maybe one version would consider swapping out a copy of the Spirit of the Frog to put her in, or swap something else out just to have one more source of spell draw? That's a tough call. The initial 3 mana version is decent stats and threat for 3 mana, but you have to draw the second version of her as well before you really benefit from her. She would need to miraculously come back by turn 7 with a number of good spells left in your deck to use her effectively. Most aggro overload shamans hope to have won the game on or by turn 7, so I think she'd be too slow. The only shaman spell revealed thus far is one to deal damage to a minion, and it has its own cost reduction potential, so I don't think that pairs well with Vash. Also, Hagatha will rotate out before the expansion drops, so Control Shaman might still be too weak to make it in the meta. Galakron Shaman has Dragon's Pack, which might appreciate the cost reduction if there's enough support for it to climb back into the top three tiers. But I'm not seeing Vash as quite powerful enough to join the new meta either. She needs support to work. As for memes, this is the third discount costs card for this review, so surely you know what I'm going to say by now. Bread and butter. Sadly, Eureka will be in wild, but Eye of the Storm will still be around, and hopefully something else fun to discount will be announced. If not, we'll have to settle for meme experiments with Dragon's Packs and Eyes of the Storms, building us taunt walls for cheaper. Still fun, but I'm hoping for more. The last card we're reviewing today is the Prime Legendary for Warriors. Kargath Bladefist is a 4 mana 4-4 four four with Rush. As with all of these, his death rattle is to shuffle Kargath Prime into your deck. So what does Kargath Prime do? He is an 8 mana 10 10 with Rush and an effect that whenever he attacks and kills a minion, you gain 10 armor. Rush, armor gain, and a huge body. He's better than Darius Crowley ever was. This alongside Armored Goon makes me think we may finally be able to win some games with Warrior Quest.
Maybe. Probably not. As both versions have Rush, this could probably find its way into Galakrond Warrior, with the Prime version being a minion that demands removal, or the game will be won for certain. The armor gain and removal ability also make it a Prime candidate for Highlander Warrior as well. So yes, this would be a current meta card. And with stats and potential like this, I'm sure a few meta warrior decks will recruit Kargath to punch stab their opponents. Sadly, the warrior quest will likely remain a meme. Fortunately, this makes the meme more viable. Heavy metal will be rotating to wild, so we can't summon 10 cost minions for 6 mana due to the armor gain with that anymore. But there are probably other broken things we can do with Kargath. So look forward to some fun meme experiments. And now it's time for the quick reviews. While fun, Kael'thas Sunstrider doesn't shine in current meta decks, and he's not likely to stride into the future meta, but meme decks are happy to hoard spells for blazingly brilliant turns. Spectral Sight is watching the current meta patiently, spotting ways to join the new meta, but it's blind to meme decks. Skull of Gul'dan would rip the current meta apart, will decapitate every other hero in the new meta, and empowers a frightening number of memes. Imprisoned Satyr is too slow for current meta decks, but he's going to awaken a number of options for new meta decks, and he will free many meme decks from captivity. Imprisoned Observer has to observe from its cell as the current and future meta proceed without it, but some meme decks can free this demon. Arch Spore Meshifen begins a one-sided quest for complete board dominance with its prime dropping 2727 in stats at once in any meta. And meme decks might even try to drop 2727 in stats twice. Or thrice. Lady Vash is surprisingly weak for the current and future metas, but she can at least help summon a cheap wall of taunts in meme decks. Kargath Bladefist punch stabs his way into any meta and he drops enough armor for Armored Goon Quest Warrior memes to flourish once again. And that's a wrap. The future reviews of Ashes of Outland cards will dive right into the cards, so look forward to those. We'll be able to do the reviews faster this time, so look forward to more coming very soon. If you enjoyed, be sure to outcast that like button, imprison that subscribe button, and be a prime commenter down below. I think I'm trying too hard to make it work. Anyways, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Have an awesome day. Mishifin. 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 Ah.